in many ways, the retain legislation bill um, is a summary of, of all that is wrong with Brexit. It's been demonstrated that economically Brexit doesn't work. And so all that you're left with is the performative uh, insistence upon sovereignty, which the advocates of this bill uh, are very good at, um, at pursuing, um, and the lurking feeling in the back um, that there are rights and standards which can be abolished, uh, which will help the United Kingdom to become uh, a more competitive, a more um, market-driven economy. I'm Brendan Donnelly, I'm the director of the Federal Trust, and I want to talk today about the retained EU law bill. We're used to absurdities in the um, tragic comedy of the Brexit process. We remember, of course, Boris Johnson writing two articles for himself to decide what his fundamental principles were about Brexit. We remember a government that thought it would be able to break international law in a specific and limited way. Um, but the latest uh, anomaly, the latest paradox that we're confronted with is precisely the EU retained law bill, uh, which seeks to abolish by the end of 2023 um, some 4,000 pieces of legislation which have a European component to them, uh, and then reinstate most of them in the hope that in this um, churning, uh, there will be an identifiable Brexit benefit um, that can be held up to an adoring but Brexit here public. Uh, it's a, a very strange procedure that's being uh, engaged in, um, and it reflects the ideological preoccupations, the profoundly unconservative ideological preoccupations of this government. Before going further, it's worth saying a word about what European legislation is. Uh, the term European legislation com conveys and conjures up for many the idea of the bu bureaucrats in Brussels um, imposing on the United Kingdom uh, a set of quite separate and quite um, distinct regulations, uh, which can and perhaps should uh, be abolished at the snap of a finger. Uh, of course, it's nothing like that. It never was anything like that. Uh, European legislation is a matter of long consultation and long consensus um, involving um, the British government, British MEPs, um, British um, members and officials in the Commission. Um, in many cases, um, European legislation made no difference in substance to British domestic legislation uh, because the British government was so successful by its negotiations in ensuring that um, European legislation, new European legislation was entirely consonant with the British existing legislation or legislation that was about, about to be introduced. Uh, over the past 50 years, um, European legislation and legislation which has a, uh, a European origin um, has become so densely intertwined with the whole corpus of British legislation um, that it's an extraordinarily uh, bold and um, reckless um, uh, endeavour um, to attempt simply from one year to the next um, to abolish all the relevant legislation. When Brexit occurred, one of the rational decisions that the government took, among the few rational decisions it took, um, was to pass a, a, a law uh, retaining European legislation. Most of it was entirely unobjectionable, um, and the idea was that as time went, went on, uh, it would be possible to work out what legislation, what individual laws um, could better be um, amended, removed in, in British interests outside the European Union. Uh, then in 2022, um, that rational process was abandoned by the competition between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak um, to appear to the British um, Conservative Party's members, um, more Eurosceptic of the two. There was a, an undertaking rapidly to um, uh, abandon and to abolish all European legislation and, if necessary, uh, replace it by new British legislation. Um, as a result, um, hours and hours are being spent uh, by officials and ministers uh, poring over perfectly unobjectionable, perfectly acceptable British legislation which has a European cachet in the hope that like gold diggers, um, it will be possible to find something which is a Brexit benefit um, by getting rid of an existing British European inspired law. Uh, there's also the danger, it seems to me, that if no such uh, laws can be found, then others will be um, abolished, got rid of, um, for the sake of an example. Um, it's like the witch finder general, um, who is always looking for sin and uh, evidence of devilry in his, in his constituency, um, and if he can't find it, he'll, he'll 
make it up. So far, so absurd, perhaps so harmless, so quaint. Um, but there's a dangerous aspect to this approach as well. Uh, a lot of um, rights, um, consumer rights, um, gender rights, um, workers' rights, environmental standards, uh, derive from European legislation in, in the British corpus of legislation. Um, and there is a, a body of opinion within the Conservative Party um, that precisely regards such legislation, uh, which most other people would regard as desirable and helpful in a civilised society, uh, as being a barrier to the turbocharging of the United Kingdom uh, as a global economic superpower. Uh, there is a danger that uh, in the churning, which um, will come about next year, probably won't be completed next year, but we go on go on to 2026 or 27, um, that there will be rights and standards lost. Uh, and that is, um, of course, uh, one of the objectives of a section of the Brexiteer constituency to create, as they put it, um, Singapore on Thames. Well, they had a bloody nose about that in Liz Truss's unhappy tenure of office, um, but they may well attempt to get through the back door uh, of this bill uh, in, in order to um, create what they regard as a more economically uh, efficient society. In many ways, the retained legislation bill um, is a summary of, of all that is wrong with Brexit. Uh, it's been demonstrated that economically Brexit doesn't work. And so all that you're left with is the performative uh, insistence upon sovereignty, which the advocates of this bill uh, are very good at, um, at pursuing, um, and the lurking feeling in the back um, that there are rights and standards which can be abolished, uh, which will help the United Kingdom to become uh, a more competitive, a more um, market-driven economy. It's always been uh, surprising to me that even as the difficulties of Brexit mount, uh, there's a reluctance on the part of many British politicians to confess and admit that it is Brexit which is the source of this problem. Uh, Brexit hasn't worked, Brexit can't work. It's an experiment which is failing. And there seems a, a, a strange inhibition on British politicians to admit that. They almost think it's unseemly or even treacherous um, to recognise that the result of the referendum in 2016 uh, was a perverse and damaging one. Um, but there's no logic in that uh, attitude. Uh, we've had Brexit, which has been uh, taken forward and happened on 20, in 2020. Um, there's no democratic reason at all why people shouldn't understand and point out that it's an experiment which is failing. It's not the obligation of politicians, it seems to me, to allow the failing experiment um, to develop its maximum capacity for disaster unless they're, until they're prepared um, to call it out for what, for what it is. The fact that so many British politicians are only willing to talk in terms of tinkering with Brexit, they're going to make it work, they're going to try and join the customs union, they're going to try and join the single market, um, really is an indication uh, of this lack of grip and purpose in the British political system. Uh, if Brexit is going to be reversed, and I'm sure it will be in due course, it will only be on the basis, uh, I fear, of considerable change within the British political system. Um, Brexit is itself a, a symptom and a cause of dysfunction within our British political system. Uh, as long as Brexit um, is uh, the incubus, the cancer uh, which invaded our society, uh, it's inevitable, it seems to me, um, that our political, economic, social and constitutional problems will only continue to mount. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.